Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kylie Burton. If you have been told that your blood work is normal, yet you feel awful, well, this is the place for you. Because whether you have a diagnosis or not, I'm going to teach you how to turn those normal labs into real answers, healing, and hope. So grab your blood work. Come join me. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kylie Burton. Oh, I have a very special guest here, as all my my guests are special. You can't just, you know, email me and get out of this podcast anymore. So Dr. Randy Michelle is a great friend and colleague. Um, he runs the Total Body Wellness Clinic in Boise, Idaho, where he helps transform health with multiple modalities, not just physical medicine. And we're going to get into that with the challenges underlying clinic health and what you can do outside of physical medicine that you can integrate into your regimens today and tomorrow without even paying anybody for him. So he's also a Spartan racer. He loves to go backpacking and he is a dad and a guy just trying to figure things out with everybody else. So welcome uh, Dr. Randy Michelle. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah. It was great. Um, a little bit of background. You, as many people listening to this will know, Cellcore. Yep. You purchased Todd's Clinic in Boise, Idaho. I did. And uh, that's where you're running things out of now. Do you do virtual medicine as well? I do. That is predominantly like we still have brick and mortar, but predominantly it's 95% virtual. So seeing people here in the States, I think the longest, farthest patient away was uh, Singapore. Yeah. So pretty cool. cool. How many? Just I think I, touch a, I got people. one in Singapore right now too. We just ship supplements that direction. Nice. And that helps when, you know, a cell court can, can ship internationally very easily. Not very many can do that. So, okay, get us into Spartan racing. For, let's just talk about him being a human first, except I don't know if humans compete in Spartan races, but. Oh, they definitely do. You know, Spartan <laughs> racing has been part of my life for the past 13 years. A patient introduced me to it and said, hey, I think you'd love to do this. You seem like you'd love this. And it was right in my backyard in Leesburg, Virginia. At the time I was in Virginia. Did the race, not really knowing what I was getting into and just fell in love with it. And yeah, so it's not just running. There's like, you know, 20, 30, 40 obstacles. They're not easy. You got a lot of rope climbs. You're carrying 60 pound sandbags, big logs. You're going under barbed wire. You're doing all sorts of stuff. And then sometimes the running is the hardest. But what I really found that I loved about this was it helped me learn I can do hard things. I can push through that when I want to quit. Like when I, when I've failed obstacles and I've done 270 burpees back to back to back to back in a race, and I still have eight miles to go, who knows how, however many failed obstacles, but it's like, no, you can do hard things. Keep going one foot in front of the other, just finish. And it really helped me at a critical point in my life to believe that I can do hard things just one step in front of the other. It's going to end eventually. Let's talk about chronic health and navigating these, not just from a physical treatment perspective, but from a mind and an emotional perspective. Fill me in. You know, it's, it's so easy to look at just the physical, right? Here are my symptoms. Here's what I'm experiencing. And I think so often people go into, whether it's a functional medicine doc, whether it's a traditional doctor, and there's really not this, this focus on you. Like, what has this done to you? Where are you at psychologically, emotionally? What are even the things that have happened in your past that may have predisposed you to what you're experiencing now? And I feel that that's so underlooked at. Like it's like an afterthought of, okay, we're just seeing the person here. But when you really start to get into their life and their history, and to learn about the experiences that they've had, you begin to see all the little, I'll say micro traumas, micro emotional things that came up, the losses, the feeling of, of lack, I'm not enough, or sometimes even things, trauma, things happening to an individual. Um, I work with a lot of women that have had abuse in their life, whether it's emotional, physical, um, on, on many levels. And, and that's something that is rarely addressed because it's hard and it's heavy 
And I don't think we recognize enough the toll that that plays on an individual's body in making them susceptible to all these things. I mean, we are bacteria, we are viruses, we are fungi, and that dynamic balance is only there when there's this dynamic balance. You add those major stresses and everything starts to shift and become unbalanced, and now we're exposed to more stuff, and it can lead to, and does, I believe, one of the main triggers of chronic illness. I remember one of my very initial early on calm uh, patients, and you know, as a newbie, you can't you can't wait to take on these you know crazy crazy cases because you're going to be the person that has this incredible testimonial after everything is over, after you've done your you know magical total blood treatment plan or whatever it looks like, and you know I had I got put on my humble podium pretty quickly because I learned that early on. And again, this was all brand new to me that it's like, wait a second, I can have the very best treatment plan laid out. I can give her the, give her the very best physical medicine modalities, whatever you want to name it. Um, ozone detox, foot baths, whatever you want to include in your, in your processes. But if she's stuck, living in trauma and if they're stuck living in this headspace where actually being ill serves them nothing's going to get better and i had this chat with her where i was you know i was trying to get into some blood work and i ordered her some labs and i have not seen better labs than hers from my perspective like golden crystal clear labs and I sat down with her and started opening up this conversation about what was life like? What was childhood like? And I learned she had a lot of trauma with her dad. And I just gently initiated this conversation on, a, on have you ever tried some emotional release therapy of some sort regarding this trauma? I thought I handled this conversation pretty well, but I never saw her again. And she was so offended, like took so much offense to this conversation that I had with her when so early on it came, it appeared to me, it was like, there's so much more to our health than physical treatment. I don't care if it's medication, supplements, treatment, ozone, I don't care what it is. There's way more to the story. And, and we're emotional beings, right? We feel, and yet when we look at, at society in especially the past four years, we've been isolated, right? And I, and I believe that isolation it has, has stuck. Polarization has stuck. And now we're all in these different camps of, you know, I'll say vaxxed, unvaxxed, masked, unmasked. You know, do you, do you like this or that? It's like, there's so much of that. And what it's caused us to lose is, is connection. And I believe at its foundation, our connection with ourselves, um, there's so much distraction that is, available like we we are we can be distracted at the touch of a button to zone out because we don't want to feel what's going on inside and i've had several patients where i start to bring this up and they're like no 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 i don't i don't go there and i said well how much do you want your health back and what do you want your life to look like you've talked about wanting to be there for your family you've talked about wanting to you know, be able to travel and be able to just wake up in the morning, get out of bed and feel like, man, I'm on my own two feet today and I'm ready to go. Instead of slowly rolling, feeling like every joint crack pop in the body, all these aches, your feet hit the ground and it's like, oh, another day. And she said, no, I really want to, to have this like just vitality. I want to feel good in my body. And I said, well, how deep are you willing to go? And, and you know, what's been neat is I, I, there, there are a lot of things I do to help with the energy side, but by no means does anyone have all the tools. And so often I'll refer out and say, Hey, here's a program I think you need to undertake as we are working on this as well. And, and the beauty of it is when, when they, when they start to do that, they come back and there's just a difference on their face. There's a difference in their eyes where a more there's more uh, crispness 
a more vibrance in the white of the eyes that I see as they start to work on some of these emotional things. And it's hard. Like this is not easy. And it and it it's I don't think it's ever going to be easy. But unless you're willing to tackle these, not on your own either, work within, you know, a safe place. Sometimes family's not safe, right? But but trusted people, um, it, it I don't think we heal. And yet there are so many simple things that we can do to begin that before we even dive deep into those things. You know, I feel that breathing and grounding are two, when I say grounding, getting out on this earth, right? Taking your shoes off and going and sitting in the grass and being okay with not doing anything. Just be. I had the most incredible experience in Yellowstone three weeks ago. I was backpacking with my boys. And after a long day's hike, we set up our tents. They fell asleep. I took my shoes off. I just sat in the grass up against this log and just observed everything around me. Right? I was kind of hoping that a bear might, might you know, off in the distance or, or an elk. That didn't happen. And that was fine. Listening to the sounds to the birds, the wind blow, the squirrels. I can't tell you how therapeutic that was and how just that radiated energy and love into me. And it helped me process some things that I've been working on that would not have happened here in my office, I don't believe. It may have happened in my very own backyard, right? But the expectation I had going into this was I get to go out and be part of nature. I get to be part of this environment and just be. So I just sat there, listened, watched, felt, allowed myself to feel. And when there are areas that may arise that you may experience this, that you feel discomfort, whether it's in a leg, brain, heart, stomach, this is where I feel the breathing comes in. And as you slow your breathing pace, focus on love to that area, it's really magical what this intentional breathing to a specific area in the body while you're grounding, the, the, the beauty of that and some of the cleansing, the healing that takes place. And guess what? We all have access to a patch of grass. We all have access to breath. It's just a matter of slowing down and taking the time to put yourself in that environment without the distraction. One of the things that I love doing, if you haven't, and this has been really helpful for me, um, and by no means am I like a specialist on this, but the things that have helped me are, are simple box breathing. So this is four counts in, four count hold, four count out, four count hold. So let's do this for a minute. Just wherever you are, don't do this in your car right? I find it helpful to close your eyes. I like to put my hands in my lap, palms up. You don't have to do that, but I find that that's most beneficial. So let's just go ahead and do that. We're going to slow our pace. So four counts in, breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold, breathe in, Hold. Breathe out. Breathe in. And now let's add this to it. The next exhale that you do, I want you to hum, right? So you're going to breathe in, and as you exhale, hum. <laughs> How do you feel? It's it's relaxing, but it, it, like my first thought is, dang, I breathe fast. So to sit here and have to go, like consciously breathe in, hold, consciously breathe out. That's really slow compared to my normal fast paced breath. You know, and, and what I love about this is it makes you be present. Right. If there's anything else that I can say today, it's a value. I think that finding presence and the breath work 
as I have begun to kind of get into that and do more of that, I have to be present. If I am like kind of counting, which I don't necessarily need to count anymore, but as I'm focusing on humming or as I'm focusing on a faster paced breath work or a slower, I have to be present. So the past is gone. Like any, any, any grief, guilt, shame from the past is gone. The future, anxiety, and what ifs, they're like gone. And in this moment of presence, it's just love, right? That's what presence is. It's love. And that is where it lives. It doesn't live in the future or the past. It lives right here. And so doing these type of things to bring presence into your life, it raises your vibrational energy. It fills your body with love and light. And I think that is like one of the first steps to really healing and engaging with the body in a way to work on trauma. Um, because if you can't find presence and calm and slow things down, I, I really don't think that we can work through some of these emotional challenges. You know, one of the one of the coolest things I do with grounding is um, I've seen this on on looking at blood work on on a live blood cell analysis, and I had someone you know go outside. All right, they came in, looked at blood, then they went outside, stood in the grass, bare feet, bare feet for fifteen minutes, came back in. We looked at the blood again. It was incredible the change that happened. It went from stagnant red blood cells clumped together to now there was life, there was movement in the red blood cells. There was none of this stacking. Like if you picture a bunch of Cheerios all stacked up, clumped together, that's what the blood looked like before. Now it looks like my little four-year-old took those Cheerios and like spread them out. So they're all kind of on their own moving and, and it was vastly different. So what happens when you're grounding and it can be as little as, as one minute I really think that 10 to 15 minutes is going to be more effective, but automatically I feel that your pace of breathing slows when you're grounding. We take up these, these ions, electrons from the earth that improve our circulation. They help reduce inflammation in the body. So if there are areas that are inflamed, a knee, an ankle, a shoulder, your whole body, being on the earth is going to help start to reduce that inflammation pattern. And the more consistent you are with it, the, the more of these electrons are going to come into the body and help to change the kind of electrical charge in the body, if we want to say that. Um, it's helping the body calm, increasing oxygenation, increasing circulation, reducing inflammation, and then again, you find presence. When you start looking around and seeing all the beauty around you, again, it just brings you into presence. And for me, when I go out and do that, whether I'm walking, sitting, I just, I focus on what I'm grateful for. And it may not be even family. It can just be what's right in front of me, that I get to experience life. I get to experience the beauty of this earth. And again, we're, we're raising our vib vibrational state, which in turn is going to help with toxicity, our ability to detox, our ability to move the lymphatic system, to move our circulation. And all these things are integral in healing. Okay. So breathing and grounding is something that you guys can do right now immediately. And chances are it's going to have more, it's going to have a profound effect on your body physically than you might think it will. So how, when it comes to grounding, do you have like a set rule or a set guideline? frequency? You know, I, I like to go out in the morning. Um, I love when the sun's coming up and there's just like this newness. It's like this rebirth of the day. And I like going out kind of staring, kind of not right at the sun, but a little bit off and the crispness of the grass, except when it's hundred degrees here in Boise, but like right now it's dropped down to 50. And so it's a little bit colder and you just feel this, this energy, but then even at lunch, right? And this is something, if you're a working professional, most of us take a lunch. If you don't, I suggest that you do because we need that time away from a computer or work. And I try go to out. at least take like two or three walks between everything. Right. Just go out and walk, but take your shoes off. 
right? It's okay. It's safe to walk in the grass. It's safe to walk on 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 cement. Um, and and I feel that just something as simple as that, walking outside, even if at a, at a picnic table, take your shoes off, put your feet on this earth, and and just be present in that moment. Take this device and leave it in your office. Don't turn it on. Be present. Uh, because, I mean, some of these things, they're so like, that's so simple. Yeah, it is. And some of the most simple things are the most profound and have the most profound effect on our body. Whether we're trying to optimize our health or whether we're trying to navigate through chronic illness. Uh, it doesn't matter what stage of the game you're at, but I think the key is, is consistency. And you may not see results after one time. Sometimes you will. But as you do this consistently, you will see a change in you. You'll see a change in your skin. You'll see a change in your breathing patterns. You'll see a change in the calmness in the body and have just, I think, a, a much better awareness of, oh, I want more of that. I recognize there's a difference. It may take a week, may take two, but I promise it will happen. All right, Randy, where can they find more about you? So probably the best place is um, a podcast, Restore the Real. Um, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, Dr. Randy Michaud. I have a Facebook page, uh, Empower Act Heal. Uh, that is where I do live teaching weekly and, and share a bunch of great things. Um, those are going to be the best places. And then my office is Total Body Wellness Clinic. So uh, you're currently like your physical location is Boise, Idaho, but you said 95% is virtual, right? Yeah, physically, yeah, we're just outside of Boise in Marine, Idaho, but the majority of the people we work with are outside. Everywhere. Everywhere. So cool. Yeah. Okay. That's Dr. Randy Michaud, M-I-C-H-A-U-X. Find him on social media, Instagram, Facebook. The Facebook, is it a group? It's a group. It's a private group. Empower, Act, private Heal. Group. Empower Act, Heal. And then the podcast is... Restore the real. Restore the real. I knew it was something the real. Restore the real. All right. And I just recorded a podcast episode with him too. So you can actually learn more about me and things I haven't ever shared before as far as life and college and testing and passing out um, on his <laughs> on his podcast. So Restore the Real with Dr. Randy Michelle. Go check out that podcast. Subscribe, listen, and do us both a favor and hit review on both of our podcasts because it gets more people with ears on this and we're just here to help you and to help change the world so i'm dr kylie and i'll see you next week hey if you're new here welcome aboard if you're coming back welcome back i'm coming back as well in fact we're gonna have new episodes every wednesday right here on the beyond the diagnosis podcast if you love what you just listened to and love what you've been listening to i would be honored to have you leave a review leave it on the place where you listen to your podcast so that way more people can find this podcast and get answers from their blood work as well i'm dr kylie and i'll see you next week